Hey, welcome back everyone. I'm Ishan Sharma and in today's video, I'll be talking about the projects that I made when I started learn to code. I started learning to code, I think back in uh, March or May of last year and I've learned a lot. And the most important part that I realized was making projects. So in today's video, I'll be telling you what all are the projects in front end web development that, that I made. And then I'll also talk about the Python projects that, that I created. Okay. This would be very exciting. I'll be showing you what all are the projects and where did I learn it from. And you can also take a look at the projects if you go and take a look at my GitHub uh, profile. Okay. So yeah, this would be very exciting. A lot of you want to know what are the projects that you should be building. So this is the exact video that you should be watching. And if you watch this video completely, I have a huge announcement at the very end of this video where I'll be telling you about this amazing opportunity that you can take up if you want to learn web development. Okay. So make sure that you watch this video completely. And with that said, now let's get started with today's video. All right, let's get started with the first project. And this is the Flappy Bird AI. If I try to run this, let me just run this right now. I'll say pip uh, or Python actually. <laughs> Python, FB and tab and let's try to play this one. This is what I learned from uh, Tech with Tim. This is a really amazing application. It's not just a game. It's actually an artificial intelligence that is learning to play this game. As you can see, this uses the generation algorithm. It's called as a neat algorithm, I think. Um, so every single time there's a new generation of Flappy Bird that try to play this game. Uh, this was really interesting for me to take a look at. And as you can see, these birds are trying to play this game, trying to win it and they're just trying to learn what they can do, right? And as you can see, these birds are quite stupid. They will take some time to learn and get better at the game. But yeah, that's what you can do. I think this, okay, so this bird has finally learned how to cross it. Again, I'm not using anything, right? This is playing the game itself. Now let's move on and take a look at the next one, which is a hangman game. Pretty simple, let me show you. So yeah, here's the game. Let me try to run this one and you will understand how this works. This is a very simple game. I have these images that will uh, change depending on if I press the, like the wrong button or the wrong key. As you can see, I'm able to click here and it disappears. This I made using Python as well as uh, the, the Pygame module, as you can see. And if I were to, I think this is sublime and I lose. And uh, this is a very simple game, nothing too complicated. So this is one uh, application that I created. Uh, like again, I used uh, Tech with Tim and his tutorial on to learning this. This was a really amazing application. And yeah, let's move on. Okay, so the next one is this tic-tac-toe application. This was like the first application that I ever made when I learned Pygame. Uh, this is also pretty simple, nothing too complicated. You have this background, which looks pretty good. You can have, this is like an image in the background and you can just click over here and you will have the, that X and O. I'm using a square and a circle over here and not that, but yeah, that's how you can just play this game. Right now, this has been like a tie. Uh, I can add multiple screens to it, but this was just like a minimum viable product that I just made out of this. All right, so this is a game of Pong, uh, pretty simple. Uh, I know a lot of you might have already played the game. So I can play both of the both of these players using uh, arrow keys and then the WASD keys, right? And I have this ball, I have to dodge the ball. There's a lot that I can add to it. Like I can have power ups and uh, lives concept and all that. But uh, yeah, this looks uh, this looks pretty good. I learned how to make this using Pygame. Let's move on to the next one. So this next application, as you can see, is called as the snake game. I can show you. Uh, yeah, this is how the game looks like. Uh, basically, we are trying to, you know, uh, have the snake and it is trying to eat the snack. And again, I used Tech with Tim to learn from this. His tutorials are just amazing, I think. And if I try to lose this game, let me just try to see if I can lose it or not. Yeah, as you can see, I have now lost the game. It says that play again and it looks pretty good. Now let's move on to the next one. And that is a machine learning model called as MNIST. So this is the model that I created using the MNIST dataset. Nothing too complicated. If I try to run this, this will take some time to uh, just train the model. As you can see, it has some epochs. I think epochs is set to five. I have uh, activation functions to be ReLU and softmax. Uh, pretty simple, nothing too complicated. I've used Keras and TensorFlow over here. And as you can see, it is trying to learn uh, from all the data that I have in the data set. And if I try to take a look at this, as you can see, this is a sandal or a shoe and it is saying that the prediction is a sandal. This uh, was a pretty simple application. I learned how to use a data set for the first time. So yeah, that is how this application looks like. There are some, uh, some bugs over here as well, but let's move on to the next one. 
Now the next application is called as an image viewer that I learned using tkinter. If I try to open this one or tkinter, however you want to pronounce it. But basically the way this works, let me just try to run this and see what happens. As you can see, I get this window uh, in which all of the images that I have inside of this folder is visible. Okay, so I can click on this screen and it shows me the next image. Okay, and this just works for the next image. I cannot go to the previous image. That's a bit of a problem, but I can fix that. Nothing too complicated. Okay, I have all these uh, icons and so that is a pretty simple application. I used the pill uh, module and I used Tkinter and obviously I used the OS module to communicate with the operating system and the functions for that to open up some images, right? So yeah, guys, this is another application that I made. It's called as an image viewer. You can also try to make it. You can also make like a video viewer using Python G streamer, I think. But yeah, let's move on. Let's move on to the next one. And that is called as a YT clone. So now we are getting into web development. Let me show you what all did I make. So this is the three applications that I made using React. Number one is a YouTube clone that I made using React and JavaScript. Let me just try to run this one right here. Wait a minute, let me go inside of this and now I'll just try to run this. So I say npm start. All right, as you can see, this is a clone of YouTube. This is not like the real YouTube and it has basic functionality. I can go to the trending if I want to. I can take a look at the subscriptions and this is the main page. I have just taken a few images from Nathaniel Drew's channel because I really love uh, watching his videos and Jade Dharma Wongsa as well. But yeah, basically this is an app that I created using uh, a video tutorial from Clever Programmer. It's really interesting, I would say. Um, definitely learned a lot about how to align all of these, learned about CSS models and all. So this was definitely uh, worth it for me, I would say. And yeah, let's move on. Let's move on to the next one. And that is called as a Tinder clone, okay? All right, so this is how this looks like. This is not uh, how it used to look like. There used to be some pictures over here that, that I can just slide through, but and unfortunately, I think my Firestore just got expired, uh, the project that I created. So because of that, I cannot view it. But as you can see on the video on the screen, this was the video that I took when I made this project, like I think three, four months back. And yeah, that looks pretty good to me. I have these functions to just click over here. Nothing really happens. Again, I used Clever Programmer's videos for making something like this. Looks pretty good to me. Let me know what you think about this. And now let's move on to the next application. All right, so unfortunately, as you can see, this is supposed to be the TikTok clone, but here in the video, as you can see, this is how the clone looked like. Right now, again, my Google Firebase project has been expired, so I need to make it again. But yeah, this is how I created this TikTok clone. It looks pretty good. Again, I use Clever Programmer's uh, tutorial for making something like this. Looks really nice. And yeah, let's move on to the next one. So this next one is actually called as a Morer Rose. I'll show you how this looks like. So I'll just run it right now. If you take a look at it, this looks really amazing to me. I use this coding trains video to make something like this. It uses coordinate geometry that you might not have studied yet, but uh, this basically uses a sign function to you know, make this visualization. It looks really beautiful to me at least. <laughs> and it definitely serves the purpose. If you, if you want to just take a look at the code, it's nothing too complicated. You can see it just has these two for loops and that is how this is working. Again, I use the turtle module over here and this just works like a charm. All right, now let's move on to the next one, which is going to be a PostNet uh, model. Okay, so let me show you what I mean by that. Okay, so this is another project that I made with my own roommate. Uh, basically, you can just go on web and this will show you a pose. Okay, so what poses are basically, as you can see, this is how it works. And I also found this really amazing repository, which I'll show you in just some time. And they actually take a video and it converts it into the poses. Okay, let me show you what that really means. So I found this, uh, this, this GitHub repository somewhere in which they create something really interesting. I'll show you how this looks like. So let's see, let's say that this is like a, a, a sample of this, this girl dancing. I don't know. But whoever is moving in the video, basically you can convert it into a file, um, which only shows the, the, the skeletal movements. Okay. So this is how it looks. This was really interesting to me to just see something like this happen. Uh, so yeah, guys, that's 
what I did with the PostNet model. I don't know how I found the video, but uh, I have it right now, so I just used it. But now let's move on to the next one, and that is going to be a Microsoft website clone that I just made for fun. Uh, let me just show you. I used uh, Brad Traversy's tutorial for making this. Nothing too complicated. It's a very simple website. I learned how to, I learned basic CSS styling and all that, how to align all of these, how to make it look like that. It was really interesting to me and this is what made me interested into learning about JavaScript and React and all that. So this was definitely a project that, that really helped me out a lot. Again, I only used normal HTML and CSS to make this. Um, looks pretty good. Looks exactly like the Microsoft website. If you go to the Microsoft website right now, as you can see, this is what the Microsoft website looks like. And this is what my website looks like, which is a copy of Microsoft. Looks quite similar, I would say. Uh, of course, I have not integrated this slider, which I'm created using another project. I'll show you that as well. So this is the slider that I created. Looks pretty good to me. I, I use this slider library, I think. I don't remember the name exactly, but I use this to make it so that it automatically changes whenever uh, I come and hover over it. Okay, so yeah, this is a very simple application, just a normal uh, nav bar, and then I have some information over here, and this is the main part of it. Let's move on and see what else do we have. I also made the Sudoku solver. Let me see if I can find it. All right, so here you have it. Again, I used uh, Tech with Tim's video for this. Let me just try to run this, and as you can see, this has solved my uh you know my sudoku board it basically uses this backtracking algorithm in which it goes back to check if there are some uh some better ways to execute the problem i wouldn't go into much detail but that's a basic uh, understanding of how this thing works nothing too complex you can take a look at the video that he has created tech with him and you will understand how to make something like this so yeah guys that is it those are the projects that i made it's very much important that you understand exactly what is happening to the project it's not about coming up with unique ideas it's more about understanding what exactly is happening inside of your project that you have created okay and it is completely okay for you to learn from tutorials and make it as it goes okay but you have to understand everything about it and now for the big announcement that all of you have been waiting for i in collaboration with code dam i'm launching a 30-day accelerator program for all of you to take a look at in this 30 days we will be mentoring you directly every single day you will get tasks for you to learn about web development. We'll be taking a look at HTML, CSS, we'll be taking a look at JavaScript, we will build a lot of projects, and then you will also be learning about React and Redux, and then you'll also be making a lot of projects using React. This is an amazing opportunity for all of you to take a look at. We will be mentoring you every single day, and you will also get feedback by the end of the day okay you will get the task you will have to do the task and then you will have to show it to us and then we will give you feedback on top of that okay this is a very limited event only 50 people are admitted into this and if you want to be a part of this there are two things that you need to do okay you need to first of all be a code dam member that is 499 rupees that you need to pay after which you will get access to the complete accelerator program along with you will be getting 50 plus hours of course content on code dam and you will also get to make tons of projects on code dam classrooms okay once you have become a code dam member it is only for 499 rupees which i think is incredibly cheap uh, it's actually cheaper than what an udemy course is so i think this is an amazing opportunity for you to learn web development before 2020 ends okay we are on a mission to create as many developers as possible and that is why we have come up with this amazing program okay there would be like a whatsapp group we can talk to each other we can have uh, conversations we can clear your doubts and the second step that you need to do is to fill the google form okay there will be a google form down in the description just take a look at it and if you fill that you will get admitted into this accelerator program again we only have 50 seats so make sure that you sign up for it as soon as possible the program will be launching uh in just three four days okay so it should be, it should be launching by 7th of december so make sure that you grab your seat okay <laughs> yeah thank you so much for watching this video guys make sure that you subscribe to this channel like this video share this video with your friends if they are excited about creating projects after learning some technologies like python or web development but uh, yeah thank you all for watching i hope you learned something from this let me know in the comment section below what do you think about it and also take a look at the accelerator program that we have for learning web development Thank you so much and I will see you in the next video. Make sure that you follow me on Instagram at Ishan Sharma 7390 and yeah, bye bye.